Hello YouTube people. This is my first video on this channel called Spare Parts and on my channel I will be talking about lots of Lego things like Lego reviews, Lego content, Lego mocks. And for my first video I decided I'll start with my first ever Lego set which is Anakin's Jedi Interceptor from the year 2014. This set is set number 75038 and it came with 233 pieces and two minifigures. It also retailed for $25 in its year of 2014 and adjusted for inflation today, that's about $32.50. So it was a good deal at the time, but adjusted for inflation, I'm not sure if it's such a good deal anymore. Now on to the play features. So as a lot of the sets during this time had, this set also has some spring-loaded shooters. So I'm sure you know how these work. You know, you kind of press right here and they go launching off into space. Pretty cool. But the set also has the play function of when it's in flight mode, you can lift up these fin things and then you can have it like fly around with them. That's pretty cool. Another thing you can do is you can take your R2D2 minifigure, pop off his head, put him right here in the side of the ship, and then you can put his head on sideways so it looks like he's flying in the ship too. You can also open up and get access to the cockpit and put your Anakin minifigure right in there. And behind him, there's also two clips that hold his lightsaber hilt and lightsaber blade. So I guess that's a good way to store it. Not really that accurate, but it works, you know? So yeah, that's, that's one thing you can do. And it's kind of all the play features it has. I mean, it has like details that can be used as play features like the engines and stuff but that's all the play features it has all right now here's a closer look at the minifigures in this set so this is the anakin skywalker minifigure and i think he looks pretty good from the front here i'll take off his lightsaber so it's a lot easier to see so he has that robe piece which looks pretty good my one problem with the front though is that his robes are literally just like black squares on the minifigure now, i guess they were trying to do dual molding before they could really do that and it's not dual molding, so it doesn't look like anything. It's just kind of weird. It's just big black squares, and I don't really like that. But anyway, on the back, it's just blank, which is kind of disappointing, but I guess that's okay. And he does have a double-sided head. Here, let me take this off. Of him smiling. And I really like how they have like his headpiece on. That's really cool. I just think that's a great detail. Next up is the R2-D2 minifigure, if you want to call it a minifigure. It's nothing really special, it's just an R2-D2, but I remember when I first got the set, I was so excited because I didn't have an R2-D2 minifigure, and I loved R2-D2. Mine's kind of beat up because this is an old set, but he doesn't have back printing, honestly, because that's kind of a new thing. But yeah, he looks pretty good. I like to talk about in my videos, or what I want to talk about in the future, is unique prints and stickers. So. This cockpit piece right here has a print on it, which is pretty cool because I can't imagine them making that a sticker. That'd just be a nightmare, you know? And this piece right here also is a print, which is super cool. However, these fin pieces are stickers, which is unfortunate, but I understand why they did that. And these pieces right here are also stickers, but you do get this one by one circular tile that's printed with like the Imperial logo, but it wasn't the Imperial logo at the time. You know what I'm saying? But that's all the stick. Well, actually, there's one more. I often forget about this one. But they, they have this really weird sticker piece for the controls, which I think is really weird because it's it's supposed to be these are the two like joysticks you used to fly the ship, but it's a sticker, which is really strange because it's like a 3D object as a sticker. I always thought that was strange. Now it's time to talk about accuracy to the movies. Now as a Clone Wars ship, this isn't very accurate, but that's not what it's supposed to be. Because in the Clone Wars show, the ships, they kind of make them look, here I have the set right here, make them look more like this, with like straight edges and stuff. It's more sleek, but this is a episode three set. And I think for that, it's actually pretty accurate because this is kind of what it looks like in the movies. And I think they did a great job with accuracy. Now talking about looks and how cool it looks, I think this looks pretty good. I always thought when I was younger that I liked this version better just because it's sleeker, but I think this ship looks fine. It 
it's great, except for like some pieces that kind of stick out on the back, but I think it looks fine. And then for weak parts, like parts that fall off when you play with it, um, I didn't really have that problem. Maybe these things in the back actually, they come off sometimes, like you kind of got to force them, but I know when I was storing this set, I'd always find them off inside of the chest and these come off sometimes, but I think it's it's pretty good. It's pretty sturdy. And all taken together, I think this is a great set. I think there's only a few problems with it. Like this, this to be honest, this sticker I really don't like inside the cockpit, but that's my really my only gripe with the set, except for like this back part, I don't really like that much, but they had to do that to make it work. I think it's a fine set. I think it's really good, probably like a nine out of 10 or something. It's really good for the time. That's my review of set number 75038, Anakin's Jedi Interceptor. Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.